My name is Pauline Melville, and many years ago I attended uh, a poetry reading. And after that, I wrote a very small piece, which I'm going to read, entitled The Poet. The reading took place in a rather bleak room in London's Institute of Contemporary Arts. The room was well lit. The audience consisted of some 50 people, Guyanese who had settled in England, and British people with an interest in Caribbean arts, with the addition of one or two who had just come out of curiosity or to shelter from the dark winter outside. And then the poet stood up. He was a tall, well-built man, dark complexioned with a soft, squarish face. He wore a smart, light tweed jacket, well cut, but underneath this was an old, slightly frayed, square-necked, white cable stitch pullover. It was difficult to see whether the book he carried in his hand trembled or whether that was an optical illusion. Most of us knew that many years earlier he had been jailed for his beliefs during the struggle for Guyana's independence. He began to read. I walk slowly in the wind. Around the voice, I could hear the sound of the waves breaking against the sea wall in Georgetown. And then something happened to the audience. A sort of tremor went through them. It was as if they had woken from a trance, as if they were turning to each other and saying, oh yes, this is what a real poet is. This is how it is supposed to be. We had forgotten. We must have been asleep. An ancient voice seemed to speak through the centuries to us. Immediately, we all knew that poetry is a serious matter. All sorts of wisdom moved around and through the sound of the words. The audience understood that for him, poetry was the gravest of passions. If it is possible for a country to speak through a man, Guyana should be proud to have such a voice stained with its history. Tears came into the eyes of more than one listener. I had known him for many years, his intelligence fast and broad, innocent and searing, assessing a remark, foreseeing the outcome of the conversation and choosing not to reply with more than a brief sardonic comment. Here was Guyana standing amongst us. The poet, of course, was Martin Carter. You are involved. This I have learned. Today a speck. Tomorrow a hero. Hero or monster. You are consumed. Like a jig shakes the loom. Like a web is spun the pattern. All are involved. All are consumed. This short poem is one of the best known and most quoted of Martin Carter's poems. It is the final poem of his best known collection, Poems of Resistance, published in 1954. This little book of 18 poems was an inspiring cultural expression of the Guyanese people's fight against colonial rule. Branded subversive literature, it was seized in a police raid during the repression which followed the landing of British troops and the suspension of the constitution in October, 1953. The title has some unusual features and it is with these that we must begin. It is not a line lifted from the body of the poem itself, but it is, in its construction, exactly like lines 5, 10, and 11, the closing lines of the two stanzas. 
consisting only of words that occur in these three lines, the title is locked into the poem and implicated in the pattern of its motion and therefore in the logic of its meaning. This emerges only as the poem unfolds, as its repetitions or echoes begin to register. <clears throat> it is reasonable to say that the poem invites us to treat its title as part of a whole. Indeed, it is only when the title is treated as the first line of the poem of 12 lines that the balance of its stanza is asserted and their symmetry revealed six, six instead of five, six. At the beginning of his analysis of Keats Ode to a Grecian Urn, Leo Spitzer writes that he feels justified in beginning as he does by the title of the poem, Ode to a Grecian Urn which though located outside of the poem proper, still belongs to it and contains the orientation intended for us by the poet, who, as is always the case, speaks in his title to his public as a critic. In the case of our title, it also has this difference, whereas the poem proper consists of what is spoken by a narrator created by the poet for this purpose, the title comes from the poet himself speaking in his own voice, unmediated by the narrative persona. <laughs> Congratulations, Diana on making it to 51 years since independence. Congratulations to us on ridding ourselves of colonial masters and colonial mentalities. Congratulations to us on ending racial disharmony. Congratulations to us on developing and sustaining a beneficial political system. Congratulations to us on ensuring that the rights of others are protected, that the environment is protected that our children are protected. Congratulations to us on making Guyana a wealthier, better, stronger, more focused nation. Congratulations. Of course, the entire previous paragraph was written in a thick sarcasm that if not identified by you, good reader, clearly indicates that I need to work on my sarcasm in writing or that you need to take off your blinders and see the country for what it is. Yes, half a century after independence has given us some improvement, but in most areas, especially in the areas identified in paragraph one, we as a country and as a people have failed miserably. If there was a literary work in all of Guyanese history, that best responds to the current situation that Guyana and its people are in, it would be Martin Carter's excellent and rather well-known You Are Involved, a poem where the title of the poem itself rings through with the lesson it holds at the center of itself for all Guyanese to adhere to. Let us next note that the you that greets us right here at the outset is a word of great complexity and range of function. First of all, the you is a duality. It contains a double reference. It is used to address both a single person and many persons. That is, it is both singular and plural. In his brilliant philological analysis of an American advertisement, Leo Spitzer has demonstrated how this very ambiguity of the you 
was exploited in the strategies of the advertisement. The verbal text of the advertisement under scrutiny, it also has a visual text, is the famous and promoting a particular brand of orange juice from the sun-kissed groves of California, fresh for you. Spitzer wrote, you is a startling word. It calls up the dormant ego in every human being. You is in fact nothing but the ego seen by another. It also suggests someone outside of us who is able to say you and who feels akin to us as a fellow man. Perhaps its most notorious example footnoted by Spitzer is its use in the wartime enlistment poster by the James Montgomery flag. Uncle Sam needs you for the United States Army. This cartoon, more so than any other example, effectively exploited this personal susceptibility of the individual to any address which is intended generally. The English you can do this, Spitzer argues, because it enjoys the ambiguity to a degree unknown in the main European languages, which are characterized by greater inflection, it is equally applicable to a single or a plural audience. And in advertising, this double reference is fully exploited. The advertiser, while preparing his copy for the general public, thinks the you as an all of you, but intends it to be interpreted as a you personally, applicable to an individual A, B, or C. Though he is only one of millions, every single individual is individually addressed and flattered. The you in our title works in a somewhat similar way. This is, it has the effect of actively drawing the individual reader into a wider community of persons. Our first word singles out an individual from all humanity, the reader, who then proceeds in the company of the narrator to merge his individual being into humanity as a whole. In our own case, though he is only one of millions, every single individual is individually addressed and implicated. The title beckons to the reader to approach, step in, and live out the poem's experience of annihilation. It is not until after we accepted the invitation and entered into the poem proper and traveled down the final all of the last line that one of the important motions of the poem is revealed or better is activated. The plural all reaches back to the singular you of the title and triggers its plural content. This is to say that you which began only as an address to a single individual has acquired through the process of our experience of the whole poem, a plural audience, all of humanity. There is a suggestion or circularity with you and all being different points on the circle. This circularity is linked to the idea of eternal recurrence, that tragic sense of time that haunts the poem. You are involved by Martin Carter. This I have learned 
Today a speck, tomorrow a hero. Hero or monster, you are consumed. Like a jig shakes the loom, like a web is spun the pattern. All are involved, all are consumed. Today a speck, tomorrow a hero. Hero or monster, you are consumed. Is a part of the opening line that tells us from the very beginning what the poem is about, what the concerns of the poet are. The immediacy of the intentions of the poet persona is important because it conveys a sense of urgency. As if Carter wants the reader to understand the concept that whether hero or monster, whether politician or pauper, man or woman, elders or children, African or Indian, good people or bad people, we are all eventually consumed. Does this consumption refer to death? Does it mean consumed in the process of our actions and inactions? Consumed because of our decisions? Because of our history and its relation to our present and future? Regardless of what specifically is meant by Carter, the remaining and underscored idea is that we are all consumed despite who we are and what we have done. The narrator, the I of line one, is caught up in a similar movement as the reader or readers, I, you, all, all. It is the same movement from the particular I to the universal all. These movements take place within the experience of the poem. Our little poem belongs in the company of those works of art like Impressionist painting, which exists in statu nascendi, in a state of being born. They are not closed and finished things. They require the activity of the reader or spectator to bring them to life and completion to finish them. From the very first word of the title, the reader is implicated, not only in the dark side of the world, but also in the labor of the poem itself. This, this I have learned today a speck Tomorrow a hero, hero a monster, you are involved like a jig shakes the loom, like a web the pattern is spun, all are involved. All are consumed, all are involved, all are consumed. Involved, consumed, you are involved, you are consumed, all are involved all are consumed. The refrain tolls through the poem and is choric in its function. The movement from involved to consumed is the first and the last of the poem's movements, that which was in the beginning and which is at the end. It is the poem's central motion 
that which governs all its other motions and to which all other motions are drawn and converge. In the drama of consciousness and utterance, that is the poem, involved and consumed, signifying the two stages of the process of knowing. The moment at which and within which we pass from one into the other is the moment of a truth and of the knowledge of truth. Like a web is spun the pattern. All are involved, all are consumed. Reads the last section. The lines in that last section reaffirm this sense of togetherness that began at the beginning of the poem. The imagery of the web emphasizes the idea that we are trapped together, connected together, and inevitably bound together. And this is why we are all involved, and also why we are all consumed, and therefore why we must all share responsibility for change for the representation of our desires, for betterment, or risk becoming even more lost, more divided, and more fallen as a nation. I do not mean to be cynical, but to celebrate 51 years of independence simply for the sake of doing so, while the country and its people continue to stew in a vat of problems that have existed since before independence itself seems a bit contradictory. In an environment of militancy and passion and discovery, in the bleak days when reaction and reason held dominion over reason and revolution, or when the revolution lost dominion over itself and fell into unreason, a young poet brooded deeply and creatively about the large eternal things, truth, being, the one and many, knowing and doing, birth, life, and death. At the heart of the brooding, whether sparked by the stem of a broken flower or by the turret of a gunboat, in its deepest depths were sadness and dejection, a sharing of the lost hopes of a hopeful time. In a season that promised birth, the generation of 1953 lived through the anguish and bitterness of the stillborn. This we have learned. The young poet militant from within the front line of the people's freedom struggle placed his spare and elegiac little luminous poem at the end of the poems of resistance because being a poet of truth and scruple, he could not but qualify the hope and temper the optimism of the battle songs. All was not light. And of all the sensitive fighters around him, it was he who looked most intently into the nightmare of our history. And in occasional flashes of darkness, he made his report of what he saw there. You are involved. This I have learned. Today is speck, tomorrow a hero. Hero or monster, you are consumed. Like a jig shakes the loom, like a web is spun the pattern, all are involved. 
all are consumed.